Welcome to the African Leadership Series, where we bring you great inspirational speeches of African leaders. And, you know, um, it's important in terms of what you're doing, um, looking at African history. John Henry Clark said that, uh, you know, uh, history is the lens through which you look at the future. And that's precisely what, what you're saying uh, as well. And it's important when, when we look at history to understand that African history is world history. Without African history, there is, there is no history. Again, African history is world history. Why? Because we were the first human beings. Again, why? Because we had the first civilization and, and we not only were the first human beings, but we spread our humanity around the world. And not only were the first civilized people, but we spread our civilization around the world. And then the barbarians that, who came out of the caves of Europe during the Ice Age and, and the Arabs, then they began to destroy our civilization because they could not understand it. And that's where we are in a sense, you know, after 2,000 years or more of that type of invasion and destruction. Now, something my father said, we know we have had slavery, we know we have had colonialism, but we, we must liberate our minds from mental slavery because whilst others may free the body, none but ourselves can free the mind. And if we do not uh, liberate our minds from mental slavery, then we cannot be who we are and who we ought to be, meaning African. Because what has happened is that the world ideology and, and, and world, world science, and a young brother mentioned cosmogony, cosmology, philosophy, all of that has been co-opted by Europeans. And, and they're ignorant, quite frankly, in terms of the basis of life, the source of life, which one can call it God, if you will, or one can call it the quantum field, if you like the scientific uh, uh, term, or you can call it the ether, etc., cetera, et cetera. But there is one source, and, and we are made in the image of that source, meaning that we're spiritual beings. And then what has happened now, our spirituality, which we had in Africa, you know, basically there was no such thing as religion. It was a way of life, a spiritual way of life. That was how we lived in, 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 in Africa. And then people who came to Africa and saw that and learned from us, whether it was the Hebrew uh, uh, people or, 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 the, or the Muslim people or the Christian people, you know, they developed religions. But then the religion became something relative to an individual and relative to a dogma. That's not what spirituality is all about. Spirituality is about a way of life, a way of development of the human being, so that the spiritual essence can manifest in, in the physical uh, manifestation on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's when you get to your sociology, how you relate to other human beings. That's how you get to economics and economic development you know, your cooperative economics and, 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 and your, your relationship in terms of working together. If you look at all of African civilizations and nations, et cetera, et cetera, it's all cooperative, Umoja and Ujima, uh, cooperative work and responsibility, cooperative e economics. And, and this, this is what we have to look back uh, to and bring it forward in terms of the industrial and the post-industrial age where we're now into the, the internet and, and, and all of the, the, the technology that we have at the present time. But the principles are the same, and the principles are African principles of the unity of us as a people. There's one race, the human race. There's not a divided um, um, human race. There's one race, the human race. Uh, some people are mixed up with Neanderthals, but that's a different story. But there's one race. Now, there are different ethnicities because of different climactic factors and, and different histories. But we are the original, the human race. And our uh, a trajectory over time is the most important because we go back 200,000 years. Nobody else goes back 200,000 years. And, and we have that in our DNA and we have that in our history, which you young people have to get to know because that is going to liberate your mind from mental slavery. And once your mind is liberated from mental slavery, then, then your spiritual essence comes forward, and that is your creativity. And then no obstacle can stand in your way because you are part of divinity. 
And when you are part of divinity, then your intuition can bring to you all of the solutions that you need to solve the problems that face you. So don't despair. And as a matter of fact, if you look now at this COVID situation, going into post-COVID, you'll see that the dominant ideology is fraying, it is dissolving, it is falling apart because of the fact that it has not been able to cope with the problems that it has created. It has created climate change and it's bringing disaster. It is it, creating um, um, ways of living that are not compatible with, with, with longevity and, and, and leaves you open in terms of your diminished resistance. It leaves you open to all kinds of diseases. So you see people dying off um, because of pre-existing conditions and so on, when their immune system should be able to cope with the problems that are out there, whether they're bacterial or viral or otherwise. And, and, and we, 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 we see, for example, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, January the, the, the sixth year um, uh, in the United States of America, the, the rising up of divisive uh, ideologies, and, and you see the fracturing of the, a so-called democracy, which has not been a, a, a true democracy because it has not functioned for the people. So, so we see that people who have set them up as, as, as you know, you know what, what the world should be like, and, and, and um, uh, paragons of virtue, et cetera, et cetera. When you know the history, you see that these people have been destroying other people. And, you know, they've murdered, they've pillaged, they've stolen continents, and that they're now destroying the planet and seeking to go elsewhere. So we, we, do we have to liberate our minds from the belief that this is the way that life should be? And all we have to do is look back at our own history and realize uh, um, how life should be in its essence and how it has been. For example, if you look at Kemet, uh, Kemet was a wonderful civilization for more than 3,000 years. And no European, quote, civilization has existed for anything close to that period of time. So we have all of that there to inform us as we go forward because we, we cannot develop unless we liberate our minds. Because when we liberate our minds, we know we're African, and then we're able to unite. And, and our unity will be the basis of our economic development. Because um, united, we are stronger. United, we are able to, to um, um, mine our resources and then share our resources. And then everybody uh, develops uh, together so that we don't have this great class system, the great inequality that we have at, at the present time. If you like more African speeches like this, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to catch all our latest videos. Remember to leave your suggestions on the topics you would like us to cover in the comments below.